Hello, and welcome to Bears in Trees TV. This time in news, a new species of whale has been discovered in the Gulf of Mexico. Bears in Trees' Ramblings of a Lunatic has reached 1 million plays on Spotify and... Redacted! Turns out to be my shadow. But let's just have a quick midpoint reload. A whole new species of whale was discovered. How do they, it's whales, they're huge. How does that just go unnoticed? Well, apparent. Anyway, we've got a whole host of fun activities all set to double you for Wambo. But first, let's speak person to abstract concept of the audience. How are you doing? No, but how are you really doing? No, but how are you really doing? Like, really? Great, great, great. Me! <laughs> Ian, with the weather. I've got so much weather over here. I bet you're jealous for how much weather I've got. I've got so much weather. An unbelievable amount of weather. Look how much weather there is, and it's all mine. It's my weather. Bet, you're, bet you wish you had all this weather. No, it's mine. <laughs> nice one. And now, Ian, with the sports. <laughs> yeah, so true. Now, on with today's programming. And in the words of Bo Burnham, the pages are blank. I know it. Why am I lying to you? Hello and welcome to this review of objects I found lying around in my room. Firstly, we have this stamp that says, Raw. I've never used it. Now I've used it. Now I've used it twice. Now I've used it three times. Secondly, we have these two sperm key rings. They're lovers, LGBT icons. Thirdly, we have this pig I stole from my friend Henry's dad's nativity scene three Christmases ago. That sentence made more sense in my head Look at him. This pig met Jesus. This pig was the midwife to Jesus. This pig is in love with this sperm. They're lovers, LGBT icons. This pig is in love with this stamp. They're lovers, LGBT icons. This sperm is in love with this stamp. They're straight. Thank you for coming to today's episode of Objects I've amassed in my bedroom. I hope to see you again soon. I hope to see you again. I hope to see you again. Well, hello there. Have you ever wondered how bears in trees get the most incredible tambourine sounds on every single one of their records? Well, today, I'm going to let you into all our secrets. So starting here with my first tambourine. It's round, it's bright, it's, you know, full of flavour. Really love this tambourine. Next we've got the half moon version. Same colour, a little bit brighter and yummier. It's a lovely tambourine. This tambourine is blue and it makes it sound more blue. Yeah, you know, decent sounding. Just different, isn't it? This one sounds like rubbish, but maybe that's what you want sometimes. It's made of wood, sounds like it's made of wood. Been glued together many times, sounds like it's been glued together many times. This one, slightly different. This isn't a tambourine, I'm afraid. Um, I deceived you. This is a timbrel because it's got skin on it. I've never actually used it. And this one is a little boy. Lovely. And there we go, tambourines. What's a cow's favourite musical movie? Oh. Hello, and welcome to the five best Disney movie musicals as chosen by me, Callum, from Bears in Trees. Insert jingle. This first section of this video is not fun. It is not exciting, but it is important. When it comes to ranking things, be it hand sanitizer, light bulbs, or even Disney movie musicals, we need definitions, we need rules, and we need structure. Without it, society would collapse. So, when I'm referring to Disney movie musicals, I'm referring to films which were made by Disney and are musicals. These films must have a minimum of three songs, Uno, Dos, Free, and those three songs need to be sung by characters in the film. So you can't have like a song which is sung over the top while the character is doing something themselves 
needs to sing the song. This excludes many popular Disney films, including Lilo and Stitch, Tarzan, and Brother Bear. Those three films and many more are excluded because the characters do not sing the song. So for example, Lilo and Stitch, you could argue that the guy who teaches Lilo how to hula dance sings Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride, but you don't really see him sing it. Plus there's only one song you need free, so they don't count on it. Getting rid of those and I'm focusing on Disney movie musical. Very important. I found a list on IMDB, kind of has a good list of Disney movie musicals, but there's some on it which still don't count. For example, they have the Mulan remake, which definitely is not a movie musical. There's barely any songs in it at all. That's the list I'm basically using, but I'm taking out the ones which don't fit. Now, let's get down to the important bit, ranking the movie. First of all, I'd like to um, talk about a couple of honorable mentions. Hunchback of Notre Dame, very, very good film. Definitely an honorable mention. That's quite possibly the e evilest Disney villain ever. Froyo is not just a frozen yogurt, he is absolutely evil. But to be honest, I just, I don't know what it is. It's an absolutely banging film, but I guess I just didn't connect with it as much as I did with other Disney films. Another honorable mention, High School Musical, as a whole, but mainly number one, because that's the best one. I'm basically saying this so that people don't tell me that I'm ignoring all the Disney Channel stuff, because I am basically ignoring the Disney Channel stuff, but not because I'm ignoring it, I'm ignoring it because it's not as good as the other Disney stuff. The drama teacher definitely carried High School Musical number one. And my last honorable mention is, not in the top five here, Mulan. I'm, it's not in my top five, I'm sorry. It's amazing. Let's get down to business to defeat. Yeah, you'd think top five, but if you watch it, they kind of forget it's a musical kind of halfway through. The last like song is, girl, we're fighting for, oh wait, I don't know why I'm saying, girl, we're fighting for, and then and then there's like that bit of which has been burnt. There's no more songs after that. And there's like still half a movie to go. So for that reason, doesn't get into the top five, but it is absolutely banging. Right, now let's get into the top five. I was gonna do them in no particular order, but I've decided that I'm now gonna do them in a particular order. So these are my top five Disney movie musicals in a particular order. My number five goes to Moana. Moana's number five. I am Moana. See, this is a great film. I watched it earlier today, actually. Best thing that Lin Manuel Miranda has ever done. But How Far I'll Go is basically like the only good song in it. I mean, that's not true. The other songs are fine, but like, it's carried by that song. Shiny, isn't that great? You're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah, it's kind of funny, but it's only funny because it's a rock. If it was anyone else, it'd be rubbish. The, the How Far I Go carries the whole film. So for that reason, it's good, lovely film. Number five. Also, Crazy Grandma, she's great. Number four. Uh, Frozen 2. Yeah, better than Frozen. Let's face it, let's be honest, not only are the songs better, the movie's better. The songs are more spread out across the movie, which is quite good, isn't it? Like Frozen, all the songs right at the beginning. Frozen 2, lovely and spread out throughout the whole film. Let's talk about it. Into the Unknown is much better than Let It Go. Show Yourself is an absolute banger. All is Found, the lullaby, which um, Evan Rachel Wood, who is an absolute goddess, sings. And then the next right thing, that one, you're like, ah, oh, is it a good song? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Frozen 2, that's number four. Number three goes to... Oh, I get, actually, three's probably all that exciting. I doesn't need a drum roll, does it? Tangled! Yay! <laughs> Tangled is an absolute comfort movie. Just one of those films you can just watch and it's great. Alan Menken doing absolute bits. Banger after banger. Um, very cute film. Gets number three spot. Number two... <laughs> Hercules! More like Jerkules. <laughs> Hercules gets number two. The Muses. How good are they? Pegasus, Pegasus, a flying horse. Danny DeVito's in it. What more could you want from a film? Go to Distance is absolutely banging. I mean, it's just such a good film. I think I think it's one of those like some people love it and they they are right to love it. And I feel like some people just like haven't seen it or just whatever. But go and watch it, please, because it's amazing. And finally, number one spot on the top five Disney movie musicals according to me, <laughs> The Lion King. Yay! <laughs> It's an absolute classic, absolute classic for a reason. I think what's so good about The Lion King is not only are the songs incredible and just so good, they're so worked in with the score. The score, Hans Zimmer did an absolute blazing job. Good job, good job, Hans. There's a reason that Disney have absolutely milked it with sequels and prequels and spin-offs and remakes. No, there's a Lion King one and a half. They made Lion King two and then they made Lion King one and a half. And Lion King one and a half actually comes before The Lion King. I know, right? That was then. What's Lion King? Well, that gets number one Disney movie musicals according to Callan. Me, that's me, I'm Callan. And these are my top five Disney movie musicals. Ooh, yeah.
Hello, and welcome to your favourite game show, What's That Sound? With me, Ian. So now it's time for you, the audience, to guess what is that sound? Here it is. Did you guess what the sound was? Well, you'll find out after these messages from our sponsor. Welcome back to Get That, that sound? sound! Did you guess knife scraping on my hoodie? Well then you'd be right. Here it is again. And here it is again in song form. The first rule to doing your makeup is that there are no rules to doing your makeup. So, let's start with a highlighter. We take whatever thing you want, I don't freaking care, and apply it liberally to that nose and that bridge of that nose. Nice and sparkly, good. Don't stop there. You want like the bit above your lip too. Nice, and now you want, I don't know, eyelids. Why not? Okay, so now we're feeling shiny. Let's add some contrast. Next up, I'm feeling mascara. Um, my brand has avocados on it, but other mascara brands are available. Any you get on your eyes is just free real estate, so don't worry about it. So there we go, my mascara is done. And now I have two extra dots that weren't there before. So we move. Next, you take the eyeliner pen. Now I'm not very good at eyeliner, so I don't do it. I just put little dots under my eyes. Make them nice and big. There we go. And finally, let's throw some color in here. Uh, the one thing I really like to do right now is put colour on my nose because I think it's really fun, so... Yeah. You just want to like, I don't know, mix in with a highlighter. I don't use a brush very much, I just use my fingers because I think it's kind of fun. I think it's really fun just like accentuating your corners. I really like whatever this is, it's kind of clowny, but it kind of works. I'm here for it. What else do I want to do? Ah, and there we go. Now, remember the three rules of doing makeup. Firstly, there are no rules. Secondly, always take the free trial. And thirdly, Bears and Trees are actually a pretty good band, in my honest opinion. Thank you. Hello, today we're gonna be making campfires but I haven't got a campfire, so this is as close as we can get. Step one, you need some paper. Scrunch it up, whack it in there. Lovely paper. Bonus tip, cardboard's really good as well. Step two, you need to cut up lots of little bits of dry wood so that they can catch on fire. Here's some I prepared earlier. Then you put them in, lay them on the paper. Step three, once you've got your little bits of dry wood in, you need some bigger bits of dry wood to sit on top so then they can, you know, catch on fire and stuff. Final step, always be careful with fire. Ta-da! And there we have a sort of campfire. Ooh, crackly crackly. Don't forget the marshmallows.
Hello and welcome to Baking with Callum. Baking with me, Callum. Today we're going to be making chocolate chip cookies and oh, they are so good. Step one, we're going to do our little dancey dance. Dancey dance dance, do 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 do. And then we're going to start with our unsalted butter. And then we're going to follow that up with a little bit of light brown sugar. And then some white granulated sugar. Yum. And then we're going to find our floor whisk and we're going to whisk it. We're going to whisk it until it's all whisked. And then with the power of editing, it's all whisked together until it looks a bit like that. That's good enough to eat. Yay. Then we're going to add an egg. There's, that's what an egg looks like. We're going to crack it. Nope. No, it's not cracked. Oh, yeah. There we go. And then... Oh, wow. That was full of suspense. And then we're going to add in our vanilla extract. And then we're going to whisk it again until it looks a little bit like this and then once it looks like that we're gonna add our flour like so oh all right anthony and then we're gonna add our corn flour um and then our baking powder and then the bicarbonate soda and then we're not gonna use a whisk we're gonna use this spatula thingy and we're gonna mix it around until it's all mixy mix and then we're gonna give up on the spatula because it's not working we're gonna use our hands because you know use what we use what, we, what we're made of you know until it looks like this and then once it looks like this, we're going to add all our chocolate chips into the bowl. Look at that, we've got dark milk and white chocolate chips. Yum. And then we're going to add our dough on and we're going to keep smishing it around until it all goes together. It doesn't look like it's going to work, but it does. And it looks a bit like this. Yay. And then we're going to break that dough into 60 gram chunks. Did I get it right? No, it's too heavy. We're going to roll those 60 gram chunks into little balls and then we can place them on our baking tray. And we're going to do that with all of the dough. And once done that, we're going to put them in the freezer. When they're in the freezer, you can preheat the oven to whatever it needs to be preheated to. Um, which is a temperature of some sorts. So, yep, once they're all on the tray, they're ready to go into the freezer. Oh, it's not on my left. No. Yep, they're going to go in the freezer, and once they come out of the freezer, they look like this, the same, but frozen. And then you're going to space them evenly onto two baking trays. Look, they look lovely. And then once like that, you're going to put them in the oven, and suddenly... Pew, look, you got cookies. Yeah, look how good they look. Um, once they come out of the oven, you need to leave them on a baking tray for 20 minutes so they can continue cooking. It's like so important that you do that. Um, but then once you've done that, they're ready to eat and you can give them to your favorite cat or don't because cats can't eat chocolate. So don't give them to your cat. But, you know, she can smell them and then you can give her some dreamies afterwards. Yum. They are so good. They're like literally the best cookies ever. Um, and they're super tasty. And you can like freeze them and then leave them in the freezer and then eat them like whenever you want. Just like pour one out of the freezer and put it in the oven and have cookies. This kitten, look. Oh, she cute. Look at her little face. Meow. Meow. Okay, that's all. See you later.